Guys, just want to cover Men That Go The Wrong Way again. I've been positive feedback already. It's quite unusual for my videos. I normally get some slack. Sorry, flack, not slack. <laughs> uh, somebody complaining. But the point being is, I want to explain something as well as part of this is, it's not just men that go their own way, but women that go their own way. And there's two different things to hear, but they're similar. The problems are the same, but the divisions between here and here are often created by the fact that there is no middle ground because of things like feminist, divorce, and everything else. But often you're on it, actually on the same level. I know people in the Philippines, I know people in Europe, and I know a lot of people in the UK that have simply had the life sucked out of them. Divorce does some of it from financial. And this is where I say, I stress, it's more on the men's side that they seem to lose more financial. But on the female side, it's often more emotional. Um, but the point being is both come out. Um, with a different view on life. Now, why it's relevant is the fact is, I want to reinforce the fact that it's important to recognize you're both in very similar uh, positions. The trust of others has been reduced and the independence reinforced. And myself, as my wife or anybody else will tell you, um, I'm a very independent person anyway. And my wife actually stresses about the fact that well, it's not just my wife, my ex-partners as well, is I don't really stress about um, health issues. I mean, like recently, I went back to, well, I got some new glasses ordered, and they've actually identified there's a problem with my eyes. They've been burned. My retinas have been burned from being out in the desert too much. Um, that, for me, is just like, part and parcel of the issue my wife is like well it just shows you earning good money is not important to you you know you can't replace your health i've got a, a nut and bolt that went through my left ankle the similar situation um but obviously in reverse i was actually actually trying to save somebody's life at the time and end up with a bolt through my ankle but the the point being i drive forward regardless and when I met my wife, I'd come out of a relationship of 11, of 11 years. This is why it's getting onto men that go their own way. I was actually looking at buying a Porsche and buying an apartment in Birmingham. You probably think, ah, oh, Porsche, single guy, it's all about midlife crisis. You know what? It's nothing to do with that. A lot of that is absolute nonsense related to feminism. And obviously trying to drive down the fact that maybe men just want to do something for their lives, doing something for themselves. See, the thing is, when a woman does it, it's about empowerment. Good for her if she's doing this. The guy does it is obviously trying to make his penis look bigger or something else. No, it's absolutely not. You know, at the end of the day, I wasn't buying a Porsche because um, it's a a woman in magnet or anything else. Reality is, I've wanted a Porsche since I was probably eight years old. And being in a position where you can afford one because you've actually got rid of somebody that was draining you financially, is suddenly that one day you go, I can afford 50,000 pounds on a new car. Where prior to that, you're running up debts to compensate for over expenditure by someone else in your life. So I do find some of the aggression of the from the men together and wayside relevant. And I do find that a lot of it is ignored or even refused to be interpreted, but the reality is that it has a link to something else. Um, in the same way, I recognize women. Women are being, de uh, what do you call it, 
displaced as much as men. I can understand that a woman that's slightly overweight or something may feel inferior to some, <laughs> let's be honest, model that is picked out of a magazine that's actually underweight and may actually need a trip to actually get her up to weight. But the, the point being is, you're exactly the same. You're suffering from the same problems from two different spectrums. Because what's happening is manipulation to suit certain aspects. Um, first thing is, media does not do positive media these days. It's driven by negative media. Negative media is stressed on destroying lives. It's easy to look at you like that, very in your face, than it is to actually do research in the background information and connect the dots through evaluations, through analysis and everything else that would actually involve a bit of journalism. Um, yeah. I, I'm trying to avoid saying about the BBC guy on the last video, so I'm not going to mention his name in this video. I'm going to try not to anyway. Um, but the point is that it's not journalism. That is a guy that goes out there, already has his own opinions, he's selective on his topics, he goes out there with already an objection to it before he begins. Now, don't get me wrong. I go out there and I talk to people that are not within my own demographic, they are not within my own environment, but I will sit and listen to their viewpoints. Very different. Because if somebody like religion, you probably hear me mention on my videos about pastors and things like that, I did not mention their names and the reason for that is a respect for them because of the frustrations of dealing with the problems within the church. And the reality is, if I mention their names, they'd be become a scapegoat in the sense that they would be shot down in flames. Which gets back to the men that go their own way and the sense of lack of empowerment and ability to say things. I can say things, I can say whatever I like. I work for myself, I make my own money, I'm a trader. I don't need the um, I don't need the support of it. I mean this YouTube channel actually funds stuff in the Philippines. I look after my mother in law with it, I do stuff like that. I don't even see it. I haven't seen money from YouTube ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> because we moved we moved overseas before YouTube even was financed in the sense that I don't I don't send the money to me. I don't even see it. Um, but the point is, somebody would say, I'll do it in an objective way. And somebody is targeting me. They would say, look, balding man, overweight, um, had to go abroad to find a wife, blah. Couldn't get a career in his own country, blah, blah. Because in YouTube land, you can do that because there's no specifics. But in reality, I met my wife before I lost my hair. You know, at the end of the day, I'm going bald here. But do you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Um, left the UK to meet a foreign wife. My wife will tell you that it was so random. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking for anybody. Like the men that go their own way scenario. Um, it wasn't a case of displacement or feeling inferior or having some issue with it. I wanted a, a nice car, a nice apartment, and the advantage of getting rid of my old partner is financially. That was now accessible. Um, but at the same time, there was no issue around companionship. I, I'm very rarely single, to be honest. I kind of, I mean, if you go back to when I was 15, you'd have to probably go back to maybe when I was 12 to actually find some periods when I was actually on my own. I've always had partners. 
So it's not a case of desperate rage uh, or anything else. The answer to that is no. Um, overweight. Overweight from good life. I enjoy going to good restaurants, good wine, and experiencing life. And it's very easy to say that somebody's bad for doing that. But you know what the reality is? It's enjoying your life. If you look through history, some of the most interesting people are overweight. But in comparison, a lot of people that were underweight was from malnutrition. So it's a bit like um, people that are drunk, you know, when they, when they go, uh, I can't remember the name of the secretary of Winston Churchill, but I always remember the, you know, the conversation about it being drunk and saying, I may be drunk, but I'll be sober in the morning, but you will you'll still be ugly. Now, some women may actually find that offensive, but you know what? If that were even a guy joke, it would still be funny because the whole point was the guy recognizes his own drinking issue. And as such, he makes a mockery of it. He's a very witty guy. Well, sorry, he was a very witty guy. He had a lot of problems, he had a lot of issues, but he still stayed in the UK through a major war and he still recognised for it, even though a lot of the Labour side have been very proactive in destroying that. Um, my view on going to another country, there is nothing wrong with it. If you're a man that goes your own way and wants to do your own thing, guess what? Do your own thing. There is nothing wrong with going to other countries, experience other cultures, doing other stuff. But do you know what? The same people that are probably complaining about you went on a backpacking holiday to experience very similar things. <laughs> and that, that's the irony on this. It's because they dislike you. Yeah, it's the same as somebody may actually say, Matt, your teeth are a bit red today. I'm drinking red wine. Um, but the point being on this is it's often a case of, well, you're wrong, I'm right, because I can define this to suit myself and you're this. You know what? Important thing. Woman or man, don't give a damn. Do your own thing. Whatever anybody <laughs> says is right or wrong, doesn't matter. Just do what you want to do. And that, for me, is the important bit. This channel that was originally built on the Philippines stuff was because of a lot of people going to the Philippines and a lot of, I would say a lot of the guys have had problems with relationships or can get into relationships because of the way a lot of women are in the West, the UK, US, whatever, or not wanting to get in those relationships, whether it's financial or the Roseanne Barr scenario. Um, and the funny thing is, I know they started a new series on that, I haven't watched it, but I still remember her voice from my teens because it was so bloody annoying. Um, but the point is that cranky, horrible wife um, is the sort of thing that you just think, I don't want to be involved with. Now, I'm not being funny with the Philippines. It's got a excessively disproportionate amount of beautiful women compared to many other parts of the world. Um, women that have a natural tan, that is often a tan that many women look for. The body weight that many women will look for. But unfairly, for many, <laughs> it's often very normal for Filipinos to be that sort of size. Now, don't get me wrong, I know several women in the Philippines that have quite simply gone there for the men. Um, the same as, I know some men that have gone for the men as well. I, I don't know any women that have gone for the women, but I do know people from different dynamics. And one of the important things I do stress on this channel, I don't care, you know, at the end of the day, for me, race, religion, and everything else is irrelevant. 
you know, if somebody is religious in some sense and follows this or wants to be gay, or something, I don't mind. A lot of time, there's one important bit. I just don't want to know. Not because I'm offended. It's just that I don't care. You know, that's one of the things. It's not about being offended. It's about the fact... I've said this to several people recently. I've had people at work come up to me and say, you know what, Matt? I'm gay. I'm like, does it affect your work? No. So, is there a reason I need to know you're gay? Well, no. Well, if you were married, would I need to know your wife's name? No. So why are you telling me? I don't care. It's none of my business. And I think that's one of the fundamental issues because people clash on a lot of this stuff. When the reality is, the society is the bigger problem. Society is actually driving a lot of arguing between people in groups. And uh, I'm going to actually say it and I'm trying to avoid it. The way Reggie was actually talking about in that video, about he, I, I know his viewpoint is of a black male of a certain age. So although he doesn't say it, his viewpoint is exactly that. He's done stuff in Russia that was anti-racist uh, and, or, uh, sorry, anti-immigrant and all this sort of stuff. You don't pick that out randomly. You're picking that out because it's of interest. And myself, I would not go to anything refugee related because it's not connected with me. And the only way I would actually end up in something like that is if somebody was actually lying. And that's the bit you got to look at. So the bits about men that go, around, go their own way doesn't fit into his concept of whatever he wants, his own little bubble. His BBC socialist weird little bubble. Um, are they socialist or the middle ground? I'm not sure, but um, it's definitely not real world. And this is why you're here. If you watch any of his videos, I'm saying don't, if you, if you think I'm wrong, don't watch anything related to men that go their own way. Look at anything else he's done and how you'll go into an interview, talk to people, then come out and slag them off outside. Um, because he's already gone in there with a viewpoint that is locked in his head. And instead of actually turning around and saying, you know what, I think you're lying, which is why people get in arguments with me. Um, because the, the difference is, I don't come out of there and go, you know what, that guy's an asshole. You know, I don't do that. I turn around and say, I think you're lying. That's the difference. And he is not a journalist. He's not a journalist. He picks certain things that suit his own agenda to make money. That is it. Um, I know I'm setting myself up here because I've avoided all the political stuff and I tell people to avoid the political stuff. But I feel this is getting that strong to get involved in it. And I would say um, from a social empowerment point, as in the sense that I'm not socialist, but social empowerment, um, where a lot of people actually say, well, about my wife because she's Filipina, blah, blah, blah. My wife does exactly what she wants. And I tell her that all the time. She will tell you she gets annoyed with me because I'll tell her to make her own mind up. When we go out and say, you know, like, want a penny of room? What color do you want it? Whatever you want. And I refuse to give an answer. I'm getting her to do a driving license right now to give her the opportunity of being more independent. I'm giving my wife whatever she wants. She, she, has, she holds the bank cards. I don't hold the bank cards. I don't need her. She deals with all the day-to-day -day running of things, the bills and all that sort of stuff. I deal with making money. Um, but then again, isn't that traditional marriage? 
And that's the whole point. For me and my wife, we have a traditional marriage, which is probably a very strange thing in the West these days. And at the same time, I know from our friends, I mean, I talked to, I mean, who was I talking to recently? It was, oh, the, we got a new tenant that rents one of their apartments over in Lamata, and she was saying, well, you're lucky because your wife's so wonderful and everything else. That's the point. We recognize the positives in each other. We don't drive for the negatives. Negatives are easy to find. There will always be something to drive a negative. I know from my own parents that instead of um, looking for the positives, you get the, <sighs> the negatives because that's what they're looking for. And they had been for a long time. <laughs> Myself, my wife, she can do what she wants. We do what we want and we go where we want and we stay within the limits of our marriage. And I don't think that's too bad. You know, happily married, how strange is that in this century? It's not about wife beating, it's not about being oppressive, it's not about taking away someone else's rights, it's not about any of that. It comes from independence, it becomes, my wife, my wife could be independent, but she's content. Myself, I'm independent and content, but at the same time, I recognize the value of my wife as my lifelong partner and she recognized me in the same way so you know the, this is why I find some of this stuff out there a bit bizarre because a lot of it is conflicting because it's creative uh, other stuff going on in the background I know there's a lot of good women out there that are separated divorced and stuff and there's a Philippine word well, afraid. it's called chismis, gossip. Gossip often rules. If you can recognize what's gossip, what is fact, and separate them, as well as being able to just turn around and say, I don't give a monkeys, then you will get through everything. Because media is a circus. Media is something that is purely gossip these days. They don't do facts, they don't do real information. They're selective on their content and it's what drives a lot of this hate. And it is hate. Um, now, <laughs> the big question is, does anybody want to hear more stuff about this, this type of video tonight? Um, because I know I get into these conversations locally here in Spain because there's a lot of people asking me about Brexit, what's my view, what's this, blah, blah, blah. But I haven't really pushed on YouTube quite simply because um, you, YouTube is not a fan of it. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like it too much. They cut off their revenues as well as mine. Um, but ultimately, do I think there is a need for men to go their own way? I would say the need is for society to change. I recognize the fact that independence is important and men that go their own way or women that go their own way. It's actually driven by a fundamental change that has been driven by feminism since the 60s. But what's changed is the women from the 60s have a different viewpoint and if I'm wrong, give me some of those women from the 60s. Um, because from the stuff I've researched, I've listened to, people I've spoken to, they changed. Because back then, they were students and everything else, and oppressive man, blah, blah, blah. Then they had things like kids. Then they had things like careers. And the viewpoints changed because... Up until that point, they hadn't had the most important thing that students often fail with is experience. 
Because once you have the experience, you start to recognize that a lot of people in the institutes have none whatsoever. They have li lived a lie in a society that is built inside a university. Because back to the university, they were at college. Prior to college, they were at school. They've never actually experienced real world. So they are out there touting their knowledge and experience and everything, but have never had any. Because it becomes a thought, but the thought becomes fact because it's a university. It's a bit like historians when they talk about dance. The reason I'm, I'm going to bring this up is because I, I think this is probably the most relevant thing. When you watch old 80s, 70s movies about the way people danced in those times, the information is lacking, but they just made it up. Why? Because it's what they thought, and those thoughts then become fact. Yet, they, even in their childhood, they weren't even old enough to be in the same century. Um, so you end up with Morris dancers doing dances for the uh, 14th century and stuff, because it's all they could come up with, rather than just simply saying, I have no idea. Because there is nothing recorded. Um, and that's the thing. That is universities. That's universities today. That's why there's so many studies on stuff that you would never study normally if the world relied on it. Now, going on to education. I'll finish this in the last minute. My belief in education is there's two types. There's what I call healthy ed education, and then there was what I would call education of value to the community. Hobby education is where money's being pumped into right now. They have no value or no value at best, um, but people can run debts upon them. I want to do social media studies or something else and never get a job at the end of it. Um, at the same time, electronics, Mathematics, sciences, not only are they underserved, and there's a demand for people that can do this stuff, um, they're not highlighted as the ones people should be doing. Because this gets back to part of the problem in this whole equation that universities should be open to everyone. Open to everyone actually means that you have to dumb the whole environment down to the most stupidest person in the room. Um, I have to admit, my mathematics is pretty good, but my physics, which is something I love, um, is not as good as many of the people I know who are physicists, because the difference is I don't spend all day on it. Um, but the whole point is, my black American studies is probably about as relevant as many other people's in the sense that it's not relevant because there is no oppression in many places now. The UK does not oppress black people. The UK does not single out black people. Often it's singled out by their own environment and the big problem I brought up before was the fact is they do not recognize that the fact that many of these problems are cultural Many of these problems are ingrained and the inferiority complex is built into it. As a white person that has already been told several times that I have white, what's it, the, um, all right, see, see the thing is, I don't even use this stuff, so this is why it's, I have to think about this. Um, white privilege. You know what? Garbage. That's what that is. Utter garbage. My privilege is based on something in a society that has a white domination. Where does that exist anymore? British Rhodesia is now Zimbabwe. And look at the toilet that is now. 
South Africa going the same way, same reasons. Um, but ultimately, I'm not from either. I come from, a, like I said, a military family. My military family um, is based on actually protecting what was the old empire here. Darth Vader and all that sort of stuff. Nah. <laughs> the, the British uh, Commonwealth and everything else. But even then, it was white v white. It's UK v Russia. UN v Russia. NATO v Russia. There is no white privilege in this nonsense. It's often used because people refuse to accept the fact they're in charge of their own destiny. I've never I've never taken into account anybody's colour, race or anything else related to working for me. Ever. The only thing I, the only thing I take into account, which is why I am equality mad, is can you do the bloody job? If you cannot do the bloody job, I'm not bloody watch you. That is it. It's not because you're black, it's not because you're Muslim, it's not because of anything else. It's because you're crap at it. If you can't accept that, then recognize the fact that you're creating racial hatred based on the fact that you have an inferiority complex. I don't always get what I want. Do you know what the difference is? I don't go, it's because I'm black. Or well, I can't do that, but it's because I'm white. I go, retrain, relearn, and upgrade my qualifications. And the last few years, I haven't even bothered because I've reached the point where I tell corporations to go and stuff themselves. And quite simply, I know there's a big gap. They don't want me, don't want me, don't worry about it. But when they email me and say, Matt, will you take this salary? I'm going, ah, take it, keep it. Um, because I don't need it. But do not turn around and say it's white privilege. Do not do that. That's just, it's, it's just wrong. In the UK, there is fundamental problems relating to certain ethnic groups and community groups and their population dynamics and whatever. But it's, the problems are within your own communities, whether you like it or not. And how can I say that? Matt, you're an, I want to slap you in the face. Why? Because I live in a wealthy area when I was in the UK. The wealthy areas don't get the funding you guys do. You get more funding because you're a deprived area. You get more opportunities because you're in a deprived area. You get more opportunities because you're in a deprived area. Do not sit there and say that life is so harsh and it's because of your color. It's because you can't get out of bed in the morning. Um, because ultimately, if it's not that, it's cultural. Don't like it? Guess what? In a military environment, there's a word they use, tough. Because if it's right, it's tough. In a military environment, get up at three in the morning to go for a run in the morning. Maybe you go in, I'm still tired. It's tough. But I feel I'm vomiting. I've got another two miles to go. It's tough. I tell you what, the environment a lot of people come out with these days is so hard. Go and spend six months in the Philippines and tell me your environment's hard after that. Because the problem you've got with the Philippines is you can't blame it on the white people. You can't blame it on anybody else. Because you know what? It's an entire country that is locked into poverty with problems. I've never, I've never actually understood the real, the relationship between people thinking that they were less than others 
because they were a different color. Because ultimately, I don't see it that way. And that, that's probably my own fault because I'm not a racist. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me because I don't see color or anything else. I just see a person. The only thing I ask for is equality. You know, if I can do X amount of revolutions for whatever because I did rowing or whatever, I expect the same out of every person, man, woman, or child. <laughs> you know, at the same time, I do not discriminate against anybody. Now, have I experienced discrimination? Might be your next question. The answer is yes, of course I have. And this is what I said with the acrylic, I brought up before. My old boss tried to stop me, um, well, Ryan Engineering Convention, where he actually said that my wife shouldn't come to the UK. And he didn't say why, beyond the fact she wasn't British. But the whole point is, that would be fine. But he blocked my flights back and forth to the Philippines, uh, sorry, to Spain and all that stuff. Because I don't know where you'll be next Tuesday or whatever. Yeah, he had months in advance notice of exactly where I'd be. So I understand racism. But you know what? I just highlighted it and said, you know what? I'm not happy with it. And they tried to force me out of the company after that. But you know what? That was more to do with the fact they were aware I had all the numbers relating to the failures in the NHS and everything else. And guess what? The entire company has collapsed since then. But what was nice about this, the nice bits about this, is they sent me non-disclosure agreements and tried to blackmail me into not saying anything. They stole my last month's of salary. But I'll be honest with you, I didn't even notice it was missing for about two years. Because it's only somebody, a friend of mine, I won't mention his name because he has to deal with these pricks. Um, but he actually mentioned they withheld your money. Because you know, they say, you cannot disclose this. I sent it within the company. And this is the irony here. Is why is it that I have so many support from people within the business? Because quite simply, as I said before, I'm not racist. I'm not anti-anything. The biggest problem I had, and as I've stated more than once, I was too honest for Carillion. My cousin uh, up in Scotland is actually still in a legal case with Carillion uh, relating to his back being broken. Um, there is many people with lawsuits against Carillion in the way they worked. I didn't hate the company. I just recognized the faults within it, and that was my downfall. Because I actually highlighted and said, oh, this budget doesn't look right. Oh, there's not enough, there's no way you can make a profit on this. And when you go to the prison services and you're losing a million a week, guess what? The company goes bankrupt. But what do you do? I tell you, it's going to go bankrupt. You try to sack me when I'm leaving the business anyway and don't have enough time to actually sack me. The reason they wanted to sack me was actually down to the fact is they wanted to say disgruntled employee. And that's all it comes down to because they couldn't do it any other way. Um, but you know what? I've kept all the names because the thing for me is unlike these people, I will recognize them in the future. And I'm, I'm heading back up that way. So. I'm not fussed about it. Do a bit of grudge. Oh, bloody hell, do I. But is it racism? Racism? Is it hatred on this? No, it's because they tried to really do me over. Um, and this is what you a lot of people need to recognize. Men they go their own way. They may have problems with relationships and everything else. And women have the similar problems. But... If you recognize each other's problems, you understand that the biggest problem is not either of you. The biggest problem is the environment that is being created around us. Um, yeah. Now, I will set up a new channel 
on something else, which I'll mention if anybody's interested. And I'll do more of these political things. Because like I said, it's YouTube will cut these off at some point. But if anybody's interested, I'll do them. Right? Because I have a lot of political viewpoints and I have a lot of facts, a lot of information. And I get into these conversations anyway with Peter and other people. Um, because they ask me for my viewpoint. Because they have their own information. And I expand on it. Because the advantage I have over a lot of people is I work with governments. Not a government, but governments all around the world. I work with corporations. I work with things like the health, National Health Service and a lot of these labor parasite entities. Um, and the funny thing is, saying that, right, just saying that, they are a parasitical organization would be enough to get you sacked on some of these places. Now, the bizarre thing is, of course it's parasitical. It's the health service built on taxpayers. It's not built on giving any money back. So, it, of course it's parasitical. <laughs> but is it wrong to say that? The answer to that is, from their point of view, no. Because my own viewpoint is, it's a bloody pension fund for a lot of people. It's not about... The, Oh, we're looking after your mother, we're looking after your dad, we're looking after the... It's about pension funds, like most of the government organisations. Um, but this is the funny thing. Even when I say this stuff, they still want me. Because hardly any bloody person does what I do. But, thanks for watching.